day! I am the Duchess of Yorkshire Pudding. I thought today I might tell you a story about how I became the Duchess of Yorkshire Pudding. I didn't start my life here in Yorkshire Pudding. I started it at a faraway village called Lemon Drop Village. And in Lemon Drop Village, my family owned the biggest lemon drop shop in town. Lemon Drop Village was quite a different sort of a place. We had lemon trees everywhere. There were lemon trees lining Main Street. There were fields all along the streets of lemon trees. There were forests of lemon trees. And everywhere you looked, there were lemons. There was yellow everywhere. It was the town color, you know. And I liked it because it was fairly all I knew. But when I was a young, young, young little miss, my Grammy came and she lived in another village and she had come to visit us and she had brought some chocolate pudding. And in Lemon Drop Village, we didn't eat such things. We ate lemon pudding. That's all we had. We had lemon with every meal, with breakfast, with lunch. All of our snacks had lemon in them and our pudding was lemon pudding. So. This chocolate pudding, when I was a little, little, little girl, was quite a treat. It was something sweet and it was something chocolate. There were no lemons in my pudding. It was glorious. So I had been thinking about that chocolate pudding the entire rest of my life. And as I grew older, I worked in the, the family's lemon drop shop and one day in walks this gentleman. He was quite a handsome fellow and he did catch my eye. And all of a sudden I could hear him say, Miss, Miss, can you help me with something? And so of course I went over to help the man and I said, well, what may I do for you? And he told me that he wanted to buy lemon drops and he wanted to bring them back to Yorkshire pudding. The word pudding set me off. That's all I could think about was pudding because Everyone needs pudding. I started thinking about Yorkshire pudding. I had never heard of such a thing. And so he explained that he was the Duke of Yorkshire pudding and he would like to bring lemon drops back to his family as a special treat. So I packed him up a box as he requested and we got to talking and he was a friendly old gent. So he asked if I might visit with him after I was done with work. And so I did. We met out in the courtyard outside of the shop and I took him for a walk around town and showed him the sights. I showed him the town courtyard. I showed him the lemon forest and we had, we had a wonderful time. And we spent much time together over the next few days because he was spending about a week in Lemon Drop Village at that time. And on Thursday that week, he approached me and said, so, I have heard of this thing called Lemon Drop Ball. Do you know what that is? And I said, of course I do. It is the biggest event here in Lemon Drop Village. It happens every year. And it is a once in a lifetime event if you can attend. And he says, I would love to attend, but alas, I have no one who, who would accompany me. Would you be willing to? Would you like to come on my arm? And I said, well, I think I would be honored. So he picked me up later on Friday evening and we went out to the ball together and at the ball we danced. I wore a beautiful beautiful blue dress and it was flowy and he grabbed me in his arms and twirled me around the dance floor and we had quite a lovely time and it was fairly glorious and we did not want the night to end at the end of the night and so we took a walk under the stars together. The moon was very, very bright and full in the sky and it lit up everything with this twinkly, glowy light and it was so lovely. And as we walked along the front park, the stars were twinkling in the sky and he looked down at me and said, I must ask you something. And so I said, why, yes, absolutely. And he asked me to marry him. He asked if I would come home with him and be his wife. And I was so ecstatic. I was so happy. I immediately said, yes, I would be honored to be your wife. 
and it dawned on me that I would become the Duchess of Yorkshire Pudding, and I, me, little old me, who has only had lemon pudding for all of these years, would finally be able to experience some other pudding. And my goodness, do I love pudding. I love pudding so much I wrote a song about it. I will play it for you later, don't you worry. And so he told me that he would send a carriage for me in two weeks' time, and if I could pack up my things and be ready, then the carriage would bring me off to the Kingdom of Yorkshire Pudding and we could, we could arrange for our wedding. So, I proceeded to do so. In the next two weeks, I said my goodbyes to all of my family and all of my friends, and I packed up all my things, and just as he promised, at two weeks' time, there was a carriage that pulled up in front of my house, and it was drawn by four horses. And so, my parents and I, we loaded up all of my things in the carriage. And off I went, and I traveled the countryside, and it was beautiful. And as soon as we cleared the Lemon Drop Village, I noticed something. There were no more lemon trees. I wonder if we are the only village in the entire world that has all these lemons. So, we proceeded on, and there were, there were majestic hills and mountainsides. There were forests of evergreen, and it was quite beautiful. And I really did enjoy it so much. And as we were turning around a corner, the driver turned to me and said, Now, miss, you might want to look over your shoulder at the next turn, and you will see your new home. And so I did. And as I did, I looked out over the hill and down in this valley that was full of fields of heather. And up on this hill was this glorious castle with turrets rising up into the low clouds in the sky. And off on the side, the sea lay pleasantly off to the, the bottom of the hillside, and it was just absolutely glorious. And I could not believe myself. I, I was all a flutter. This was the most beautiful dream I could ever imagine, and here I was, this was my new kingdom. So as we proceeded on, the bridge came down, and the carriage pulled into the kingdom, and over by the, the castle gate. And as I was led down off of, the, off of the carriage by the driver, I noticed that the castle door had opened, and there was my duke right there waiting for me. And I went over, and he grabbed me up in his arms in a soft embrace, and I was so happy. He said, welcome home, my duchess. And so there I was, and I was home. And so that evening, after I had put all of my things together and got in, got myself ready for dinner, we went down to the main dining hall, and there in the big wooden table we ate, and we had many courses of food, and I tried very hard to not eat so much, because, even though the food was really, really good, did I mention that? The food was very, very, very good, and it was so tasty, it was very hard to resist, but I knew there was pudding coming, so I wanted to save as much room as I possibly could. So, all of the plates were cleared after the last course, and I knew the dessert was next. And what did I wait for? I waited for pudding, right? So, off, off the cook went back into the kitchen, and out he came with a big tray full of bowls. And I was so happy. I would finally eat something besides lemon pudding. And as he set them down in front of people, I noticed something curious. I noticed that in these bowls was something not akin to pudding at all. It looked a lot like bread. And that was pretty surprising. And as they came around and mine was placed in front of mine, it was set on my plate and I looked and I noticed it did look like bread. It looked a lot more like bread than like pudding. And I couldn't imagine what this could be. And so I asked him the Duke, and I said, What might this be that we are having for dessert here? And he said, Why, that's Yorkshire pudding. Have you never had it before? And of course I had to say, No, I hadn't. And so he said, Well, we have this for dinner every night. This is our dessert. And I said, Well, thank you. So I didn't want to be rude. I picked up my spoon, and I took a bite of this. It had a very weird flavor, 
almost tasted like I was eating meat and bread. That's not what pudding's supposed to taste like. So, later on, after dinner was done and the Duke and I were talking alone together, I approached him and said, so, I have a question about the pudding. And he says, why yes, what's the question? I said, well, I think pudding should be sweet. He goes, sweet? We don't have sweet pudding here. I said, well, maybe that's, maybe that's something that we might be able to change. So he said, maybe, why don't you have a talk with the cook and see if maybe you can, you can come up with something that we could try and I'm willing to give something new a shot. I was very happy at such a thing. So in the morning, I went down to the kitchen and I had a long talk with the cook. And I said, I would love if we could learn how to make chocolate pudding. I told the cook all about the pudding that I had had when I was a little girl. And he thought it was a wonderful idea. So we set about making this chocolate pudding and I got to taste it right out of the bowl. And it was glorious. It was so, so, so tasty. And I was so happy. And I noticed at dinner that night, when he started passing the bowls around and setting them on people's plates, this look that they got, what are we eating here? What is this dessert? We don't, we, where is the Yorkshire pudding? And so the cook said, well, we're trying something new tonight. This is chocolate pudding. And they all looked at each other and they all had these, these very confused looks on their faces and said, chocolate, chocolate pudding, you say? What is this chocolate pudding? And they all proceeded to try it. And as they did, I noticed a very amusing thing. They weren't, they weren't really smiling until they took, a, they took a bite. And as they did, I noticed the smiles creep on their faces. Every single one of them was smiling and laughing by the time they had finished their pudding and thought that it was the most wonderful thing they had eaten. And from that day forward, we have had chocolate pudding for dessert every single night in the kingdom. And you know what? Out in, the, out in the village outside of the castle walls, we have been providing chocolate and sugar. And we have taught all of the villagers how to make their own chocolate pudding. And this went from a very somber village to a very happy one. Everyone greets each other with a smile now and everyone is so happy because you know, everyone needs pudding. It's the most wonderful, wonderful dessert ever, don't you think? So that is the story of how I became the Duchess of Yorkshire Pudding. We still do call our kingdom Yorkshire Pudding even though we very rarely eat it anymore. And it's, it's a wonderful thing that we don't eat it anymore. So I thought maybe you might like to hear my pudding song, and you might like to sing along with me. It has a very, very, very easy chorus. This is my, my royal ukulele, and I carry it around with me almost everywhere I go, because you never know when you might want to sing a song or strum a tune. So, the chorus to this song is quite easy to learn. It is very simple, and it goes simply just like this. I like pudding, give me some pudding, give me some pudding, yeah. Can you sing that? I love pudding, give me some pudding, give me some pudding, yeah. See, quite easy, right? All right, so I'm going to sing you my song now, and I hope that you will join me on the chorus because that would be a lovely thing to do.
my pudding song. And I know it's really simple and it's really silly, but it's awful fun, isn't it? Everybody's fun is pudding, I hope. And I hope you enjoyed this show today. I'd love to share with you another story sometime about a creature that I met on my adventures when I was going from Lemon Drop Village off to the Kingdom of Yorkshire Pudding. I met him on the way quite by accident and he travels around with me almost everywhere I go now. So I would love to introduce him to you sometime and tell you the story of how he came to be in my life. I hope you enjoyed tonight's performance and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Enjoy the rest of the Renathon, friends. Good day!